I woke up in the middle of the night and I felt like I was drowning. I was bleeding a lot. <laughs> So I've been wanting to do this video for a while. I had my tonsils removed after my second year of medical school. Now, that in itself isn't that rare. A lot of adults do have their tonsils removed. Um, but the risk is higher when you are an adult, and the risks particularly are those of re-bleeding. Um, that would be having the surgery done and bleeding after. Now, a lot of people have tonsil surgery, a lot of children have tonsil surgery without any complications, and the surgery is very different for children than it is for adults. Now, this actually became kind of an interest of mine. After having the surgery, I ended up kind of getting redemption and coming back and doing a rotation on ENT to learn even more about this. But I wanted to tell everyone my experience going through the tonsil surgery and how it's kind of changed the way that I approach medicine as a whole because this was the first experience of something like this for me. Basically, I finished up taking my board exam. I went to Paris with my sister and we came back and I knew I had this tonsil surgery coming up. So I was ready, I had done boards, I got a nice trip de-stressed and now it was uh, time for the surgery so I really wasn't worried I knew the surgeon very well uh, he's fantastic at what he does so I was doing well I made it until I don't know let's say we're a week in the pain's starting to get a little bit better and it was pretty severe for a while um, they say it's bad in adults and I'll be honest it was the worst pain I've felt thankfully uh, in my life thus far it was very hard to sleep the pain radiates to your ears because of all the nerves back there so a really uncomfortable experience, but I made it to day seven. I was ready to start feeling better, and the eschars, which are kind of the scabs in the back of your throat, started to peel off. So everything seemed to be looking up. Unfortunately, eighth or ninth evening, I woke up in the middle of the night and I felt like I was drowning. I sat up really quick and it, it thought, I thought maybe I had post nasal drip or something strange. And I sat up and something tasted weird. And so I went to the bathroom and sure enough, I was bleeding a lot. So I was staying at my parents' house. So I woke them up and went downstairs to try and eat some ice chips, basically thinking I'd vasoconstrict down any bleeding and do my best to get things under control. Now, something that is important to the story is I have a terrible gag reflex. So there was no chance of me being able to put any pressure on whatever was bleeding back there. So I'm eating ice chips, trying not to vomit. Uh, blood is a very strong emetic. It makes you vomit. So trying not to swallow too much blood, let it kind of run out of my mouth and stop it with ice cubes. So we call my surgeon and he says, you know, meet me in the ER, we'll deal with it from there. So we go to the ER and by now the bleeding has actually stopped. We had an ice collar that I had put on and I've been chewing on small ice chips and the bleeding was almost stopped. Um, we got to the ER, got checked in. He said, okay, we just need to recauterize this. We'll take you back to the OR and do a recauterization. I get the recauterization done, come out. And again, the hard part was they say, you start at day zero again for recovery. So now I have another 14 days of those eschars back there to make to have those fall off and make sure I'm not gonna bleed and that I'm totally healed. So we start the clock again. This time, maybe only three days later or so, I have the same feeling. I wake up at night, panicked, I feel like I'm drowning, I'm bleeding again. So the same routine, I get the ice chips, I get the bleeding under control, we call the surgeon and he says, come back in, we'll get this taken care of. So we go back, we go to the ER, we go to the OR, and this time we put in a material called Surgicel. This helps to coagulate or stop places from bleeding. It makes them clot up. So there was a piece of Surgicel placed up there and it was kind of sutured in place on top of the cautery that was you know, done. So they cauterized, they surgicel and left it. We were hoping that would stop the bleeding and the Surgicel will dissolve on its own. Unfortunately, I went home and just a few days, maybe two, three days later, I was eating some soup, um, just clear broth. And I felt something, again, I have that bad gag reflex, something gagging me. I started to kind of cough, trying not to cough to damage anything, but sure enough, I look back and the Surgicel is hanging down in the back of my throat. So back to the OR for another surgery. And this time, the solution was a little bit different. So this time, I've now failed cauterization. I've failed putting in a fibrin mesh. So what do we do? They decide to get, obviously, hematology involved, make sure there's no kind of bleeding disorder, but I'd already had my wisdom teeth out. I knew that wasn't the problem and so did they, to be fair. But they brought in another ENT surgeon, kind of worked together to come up with a good plan. And what they did was they oversewed my palate. So they actually brought that palatine fossa together and completely closed it up. So what that meant was that I had actually had the tissue in the back roof and, and throat of my mouth 
sutured together and closed so that whatever was bleeding could no longer bleed through. And what it ultimately ended up being was a small arteriole. It's a very small artery. It was basically just coming through, bleeding, and then when I would have something cold, it would retract through, back through the tissue, and it wouldn't really be able to be grabbed, um, tied off, burned, anything like that to stop the bleeding. So ultimately, it was that um, over sewing of my palate that stopped the bleeding permanently. But just for a second, for anyone that goes through this or for anyone to get a perspective, I started this process in the beginning of June. I was basically in and out of the hospital, in and out of the OR, all the way until July. You know, I got to experience a lot of things. Obviously going to the OR, anesthesia, multiple, it was like three or four times. Um, I was admitted one night and, and spent the night overnight. Um, so I really got an unfortunate but helpful look into what it's like to be the patient. And I think that's really changed the way that I approach patient care and interact with patients. So in terms of lasting complications, I'm very fortunate. There really isn't much. Um, small things, I choke a little bit more, not like on food, but a lot of times drinking uh, liquids because if you look in my palate, it's not even anymore and I don't think I get a full seal when I swallow. So sometimes that does bother me a little bit. I know there's a lot of people that get tonsil surgery every year and I think a lot of people downplay how serious it can be um, and also you know, I want to just shed light on what my experience was and how it's kind of affected me going forward. So it definitely was not what I was expecting. Uh, it is doable, you know, but it's definitely a painful surgery and um, stock up on ice based things. Uh, I couldn't do ice cream. Dairy really bothered me. So there's a million tips I could have. If anyone has specific questions, drop them down in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them, but I just wanted to give a brief overview of kind of my tonsil surgery gone awry, and I hope this was interesting. As always, if you enjoyed, like the video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out my Instagram. A lot of great content over there. We'll see you in the next video.